little dog. But this is my hearing dog. Why? Because I am deaf. So um, around 25 or 30 years old, I started losing my hearing. And so now I depend on this dog to be my ears. He has those big old long ears. And he warns me when someone is outside, if I'm in danger or anything like that. The bigger one, I have trained uh, with sign language. Uh, I'll say speak and he'll rough, rough, rough. And everyone's like, whoa, they'll go away from that. They're scared of that dog. He protects me. The two of the dogs protect me well. Next slide. Uh, in the past, I have been a teacher to the deaf and the hard of hearing. For many years, I taught in classrooms with children. And COVID, I was teaching online. This is a picture of that. It was hard. It was a definite challenge. And But now, I am working with Latin Deaf Services. Uh, what is this? What is Latin Deaf Services? Oh, it is a mission group, and we serve the deaf in uh, Central America. North America, South America, in the middle of those two is Central America. We service all of those countries. Our office is in Guatemala. And Guatemala is famous for what? Coffee. Oh, delicious. Beautiful, beautiful fabrics, woven materials. Oh, hold on, that's coming. Ooh, I'm hungry. I, I won't eat it though. Guatemala people, um, in Guatemala, that's the name of the country. There, in the middle. Starvation. Uh, they do not have enough food for more than one day in Guatemala. 80% of the population. 80% of the population do not have food for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. They have one meal every day, and that's it. They're thin. They have worms uh, inside. They are. Guatemala is a beautiful place. I have some pictures here. You can look at them right here. But they are, it is full of poverty and famine for the people. Next slide, please. We uh, have a beautiful country. Uh, there are volcanoes. It's very difficult to grow food. can't grow any crops or anything like that. can't grow grass for the animals. But we do service the people of Guatemala. This is a camp for the deaf. We often have camps. We also have a uh, famine center where we provide uh, food 
to children. We feed children often. So the question is, uh, what, you know, where do they go? Their parents don't uh, take care of them. Uh, do they have fosters homes? Well, we don't have foster homes. So if you can't take care of your children or they won't take care of their children, they'll place them in the dumpster and just leave them. And then the kids are left. And they'll dig through the trash, the garbage, to eat stuff, or they'll take old clothes, whatever they can, and they live in the dump. Children often die there, surrounded by garbage. No family. No love without knowing Jesus. We go and we teach about Jesus. And we bring, uh, you know, pails of bags of food. We, we take rice. We share these things with the people. We fill bags full of food that we provide to people. But also we look and see. We have drawings for them, um, for them to do uh, crafts, things for them to paint and things like that. Why do we do that? Why do we put that in there? This that we put in there, these drawings, these crafts, Mm -hmm. is an explanation of the love that God has for them. How that Jesus died for them. We explain how Jesus rose and how He ascended and that how He will come again. We provide them with these resources with the hope that it brings. We provide hope. This is a street performer, they're, they're singing. They have uh, a thing here where they're, expect, they're hoping for money, they're begging for money. But also, mm -hmm. this is a CEO of our uh, organization with precious, uh, this precious child. This child will soon die. And the, our, our CEO of our ministry is praying with the mother and with the child, um, comforting them because we cannot fix all of their health issues. Mm -hmm. But we can tell them about Jesus. Mm -hmm. And we can support the feeding center. And we can bring bags with food in it to them. Next slide, please. That's me. <laughs> this is my brother. <clears throat> he has Warden Burgess syndrome. He has he was born deaf. And <clears throat> Oh, we would wrestle and we would fight and we'd get into it, but now we're best friends. <laughs> Next slide. I went, uh, why did I go to this church specifically? This church specifically, my mom had said that I want all of my kids to know Jesus. So we searched and searched and searched. And we moved, uh, bought a new house and everything so that we could go to this church.
because they had an interpreter. Next slide. And then I was going to this church and they sent us uh, to kids camp. It was a deaf camp. Oh, we finally could understand me. Finally understood that I was a sinner and that I must accept Jesus. Or if I would die, I would go to hell. I immediately accepted Christ. And from then on,
thank you so much for sharing with us your vision and your passion in your ministry. It really, my wife, we've been talking about missionaries and we've been trying to go, but to, we keep having conflicts that pop up every time. We keep teasing each other that we need to go, but we postponed forever, maybe until we're in a nursing home. But we have a big responsibility that we want to go. It really touches our hearts. I want to share with you all a few verses from James today about being a doer, not a sitter. I grew up playing in sports, and I'm curious about how many of you all were involved in sports as well. And I'm still involved in sports to today. I'm a coach for my son in soccer. I'm a coach for other teams. I, coach, I used to coach a deaf team. So I'm familiar with sports. I understand sports. I understand how they work. I un, I'm a big competitor. I understand how they work. I was raised on how to learn it. I like a competition. If there's no competition, what's the point? If there's competition, I'm in. Games, I like to keep point. I like to be involved. I went on a mission trip in college and we went to Australia. And when we went, I was researching their rules, what they have in Australia about football. And so I was researching. And when we went, I wanted to be possible when we arrived. And no one wanted to play. You, and I said, hey, you want to play? And he said, hey, do you want to play cricket? But no one knew the rules. And when we were involved, we were still playing. I said, that's fine. So they and we playing. And we went back and forth. And it was really fun. And the Bible teaches the same idea. And we're going to see that in James. All right. James chapter 1, verse 19. Wherefore... And you know my rule when we said wherefore, it means to understand before. So it says, wherefore, he's warning you about temptation, what you'll face, and your problems. You must be patient at what you're going through and depend on God. And you will go through struggles and problems and you face. And you will. You must be patient. Understand that God gives you good things. And when we were born, he made us. And he gave us an agreement with his, and a witness to him. And we were excited to follow him. And that was before that. So then we have wherefore. And God says he expected us to go through it and we will face temptations. He says, my beloved brothers, let every man be swift to hear 
And we said, hold on, we have a problem. Wait, I'm deaf. I can't hear. What do we do? The verse doesn't apply to us. Let's go home, we're finished. No, that's not what it means. This is, let us accept it to our hearts and go on. So we start to hear slow. To speak. Slow. To wrath. That's verse 19. And James is encouraging the people of the church in this way. He said, you need to be ready to, to pay attention, and we'll see that soon. And he's saying, don't be quick to speak, and don't be quick to wrath. And we'll see why soon. And why is, for the wrath of man worketh not for the righteous of God. It doesn't work. It never, never, never in history of the world did wrath of man do something. And then, if it did so, God, we said so. Or please, for righteousness to God, it has not worked. Sometimes when God's angry, through sin it, but God God's righteous and has anchor but not us we say thank you good job but never it's, and that's a challenge for me I'll let you know I can be angry I'll let you know that me myself Pastor Mark I never imagined that I can never see that for you. No, I know, I understand. Yeah, I get angry. I'm still made of flesh. I, I can get angry sometimes. And can, is that the same for you? That's good. I'm not the only one. Whew. Okay, let's continue. And... Are, we are all made of flesh. And now, we're going to compare these. It says, Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness and superfluity, which means too much, of naughtiness, which means bad, and receive meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your souls <coughs> and then if we look at the NET version it says to put away all filth and evil excess and humbly welcome the message implanted within you which is able to save your souls it's the same verse but the point is We don't want to be have actions of anger. We need to be humble and we need to have righteous actions. Put away the bad and bring in the good. And you might be asking me, how do I do that? I have good news for you. If you don't know how to do righteousness, it's all in the Bible, and all the right things are all in the Bible. And guess what? The Bible can be ingrained in your life. And I love the word engrafted. If you're a farmer, you know the word. If you're not a farmer, you probably aren't familiar with the word engrafted. Yeah. 
but you, it's when you take things and you mix. It's when you're connecting things and putting it together, and it's growing together, and it's really cool. It's a really neat picture. It's like when there's an. It's when and then you cut it off. And then when you cut off our sinful nature, nature, it's still, it's not there anymore. And then we have this, and we're not, what is that? Is it the word of God? And it, and yeah, it is, it will grow through us. And it's important, and we need that. Hey, I know, and I know it's right. Fine, I don't need this. I don't need the Bible. No, you need the Bible. You need the Word of God. You need it. You need it to grow through. But you're still stuck. But if nothing's growing, that's if nothing's developing. You need to look for growth. And we continue on, where it says, but. Be doers of the word, not hearers, and just sitting and being lackadaisical, doing nothing. If you're just sitting and being satisfied, ah, I've done my work. And it says, for if any be hear of the word and not a doer, it's like a man beholding his nature face in a glass. For he beholdeth himself and goeth his way, and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. So that, there's a mirror, and I've, I'm looking in the mirror. How many of you this morning looked in a mirror? Yeah. Uh, of course. Why did you look in a mirror? Uh, to make sure you looked good. Oh. Make sure everything looked right. <laughs> Bill doesn't have to worry about his hair. Brush your teeth, shave, change your clothes, make sure they all looked good. Do I like my outfit? Does it match? Makeup. Now, I'm looking in the mirror. Hmm. Do I think I look good? All right, I'm ready to go. And now. Oh, yep. And I'm going on with the day with my collar flipped up. But what's the problem? And what's everyone laughing at? Why? What's wrong? No, everything's fine. You're just making stories up. Nope. I'm fine, and I'm going on with everything. No. I'm fine. You guys are making stuff up. Leave me alone. Is that better? I look good. I'm fine. Stop. Why are you interrupting me? Why? Oh. Okay. Let me make sure. Oh, I see you are complaining. 
My collar slipped up. Now I look good. Now it looks better. All right, let's get going now. Oh, what's wrong now? I fixed my collar. What's wrong now? Oh, I need to look in the mirror again. Okay, good idea. Thank you. Oh, okay, I see. My tie is out of place. All good? What's the point? To make sure I check in the mirror often. And what's the mirror do? What is the mirror? If you remember, let's go back to the verse. Let's go back one more. Be engrafted. It's important with God that not to make it a comparison. And I, when I go to church and I'm sitting there and I'm watching Pastor Park, that was a good message, wonderful, good job. And I go home, and but nothing changes. What? And but nothing. I don't need it. I go to church Sunday morning, and that's totally enough. One time. But I look in the mirror one time a week. Totally fine. But then you go to the week with so many mistakes. You need to be in the Bible every day. Not just reading it once a week, and you only see it in the Word, and it says, also, you must do it, have action in it. You must have action. Into the perfect law of liberty, in the Bible, and continueth therein. You have to read and do it. Have to have action with the Bible. And that's what I encourage you all to do. And the Word of God is important. It's essential. It's required. It's important for all of you. That in your everyday life, not just uh, look at it and go, oh yeah, cool, I'm satisfied, check mark on my to-do list, finished. But you have to actually do it. And I imagine it as like a sport and a challenge. I was pretty good at soccer. I was goalie and I enjoyed it at the time. And then I played basketball and I was pretty good at basketball. I was good at moving and I was good at playing. And then I played baseball. I was awful. I couldn't hit. I'd get up there, and I would just miss. I'd be two strikes in, three strikes, and I'd fall. I would hit, be out in left field, and it would be just horrible.
And one time they won the championship and not because of me. I was sitting on the bench. Do you want to know how many people there were? There were nine. Do you know how many people you need on a team? Ten. I was on the bench. Yep, and the coach. With the coach. There were really two coaches. Just sitting there. On the bench. Because I was that bad. I would play... I would play outfield. But hitting, I was... I just couldn't. I was so lousy. I was no good. I just literally couldn't. When we won state championship, it was not because of me. That's because we are good at just sitting. We have that skill. We have perfected it. We are able to just sit and just do that. We can hear God's word. We can be receptive to it on Sundays and sit there and know it. I got your preaching. It has filled my heart. I feel energized. I'm good for the week. But where is the action? I'm not telling you how to or how to do the action, but at church and the reminder for your faith that there's required to be action also. And if you look at the reading of the word of God, there's required to be action also. And it's required that we think about it. What kind of action can we do? First in my life. And first in your life. You have to decide to do action. Again, you have to say, Lord, I have all of this. I have all of me. And, my act, and your action is to serve you, Lord. When I'm at work, I'm still doing things for you. When I'm retired, I'm still doing that. Everything that you do should be for the Lord. The third thing is money. You have to give it to the Lord. You have to use it for God. We saw a missionary today sharing her responsibility and her burden. And I'm not, and you said, I'm not playing. I'm not telling you you have to give something today. It's not what I'm saying. I'm not trying to ask you to. It's not a not what I'm telling you to do. But I do believe that we should give and we should feel happy to be willing to do that. It's not my money. It's a tool and it's a resource that we are willing to give. To see our money as that way. Um, I will explain, close in part. Lord, I thank you for your stone for your word that we can that we can heal that our broken hearts that we can be saved that we don't know who you are. Awesome.
that you can use your word that we can also use the mirror to know who we are to be of. Lord, we know that we need improvements, that we can change, and we ask for the best and agree in agreement in your word. Thank you for the opportunity um, our time with you today and that we can read the word more and believe in giving it more financially to you and help us that we can do that today. Lord, we ask um, a special prayer for our friend who's here today, Kimberly Johnson, as she shares her, her um, responsibility as she is helping the people in Guatemala and the other countries. We pray for her mission work as the impact that it's doing for not only the deaf, but also the hearing people in the world. We pray that it will continue to impact the people. We pray that we will understand you more throughout this, and that you take care of the physical needs. We pray for also the spiritual needs, and you will be with these people, and that you know all things, and that we follow you, and we walk with you. Because thank you for their work. In Jesus' name, amen. Before you leave today, I want to have an opportunity for an 